Ever wondered how those cool swooping camera movements or perfectly timed zoom-ins are done? Well, they're called keyframes, and today I'm going to show you how to use them in CapCut so you can create smooth, eye-catching animations that stand out from the crowd. So, get ready to learn exactly how to make your transitions glide across the screen with ease. In this video, I'm going to break down CapCut's keyframe graphs in a simple, step-by-step -step way so that anyone can follow along. Let's dive in. What are keyframes and why do they matter? Think of keyframes as little markers on your video timeline that tell CapCut how something should change over time. For example, maybe you want your video to zoom in slowly, or you want a text title to slide in really fast. Each change, like position, size, rotation, or color, can be controlled by keyframes, which form the start and end points of your animation. Imagine you're drawing a flipbook. Each page can have a small change so that when you flip the pages, the drawing moves. Keyframes work the same way, but instead of flipping pages, you're moving through frames in a timeline. When you place multiple keyframes on your timeline, CapCut smoothly connects those changes. That's how your video gets that awesome animated look. Keyframes can make your content feel more alive and help you highlight important parts of your video. And the best part? They're not as hard as they sound. To follow along, open CapCut and add a clip to your timeline. If you want to test these techniques right away, pick any short video clip. Maybe a clip of you talking, a scenery shot, or even a random picture. Our goal is to practice keyframing. Ready? Let's jump in. The power of zoom effects. Now, one of the coolest ways to use keyframes is to create zoom in or zoom out effects. It's like you're drawing your viewer's attention right where you want it. Slow zoom in. Select your clip and click on it in the timeline. Add your first keyframe, start point. Look for the diamond-shaped icon in the top right corner of CapCut's editing menu, usually labeled Transform or Edit. Click it to add a keyframe at the very beginning of your clip. Add your second keyframe end point by moving the playhead, the white vertical line, to the end of the clip and increase the scale, size of your video. This will automatically set another keyframe. Play back and watch how the clip gradually zooms in from start to finish. This is perfect when you want that gentle, slow-moving focus on a person or object. Dramatic zoom in. A slow zoom is nice, but a dramatic one really catches the eye. To make the zoom faster, simply place the keyframes closer together on the timeline. That means the motion between the start and end points happens in a shorter amount of time, giving you a quick, punchy effect. You can click and drag any keyframe to move it left, earlier, or right, later. The more you squish them together, the faster the motion. This is great for building excitement, like zooming in on someone's reaction. Now that you know how to place keyframes, let's talk about how to make those animations even smoother. This is where CapCut's keyframe animation graphs come into play. A keyframe graph is the curvy line you see in the editor. It controls how fast or how slow your animation goes between those two keyframes. If it starts slow and speeds up, you'll see a certain type of curve called in. If it starts fast and ends slow, you'll see a different curve called out. Let's group the keyframe graphs in CapCut into three main categories, plus a couple of fun extras. In graphs, ease in, quad in, cubic in. All of them start slow and pick up speed toward the end. Great for bringing objects onto the screen gently. The difference between ease in, quad in, and cubic in is how dramatic that acceleration is. Ease in is a simple slow to fast motion, quad in is a bit more extreme, and cubic in is the most dramatic of all. Out graphs, ease out, quad out, cubic out. These do the opposite. Start fast, then slow down as they finish. Perfect for objects leaving the screen because it feels like they zip away then gently fade out. The difference among them is mainly the intensity of that fast start versus gentle stop. Ease graphs, also called in-out. These start slow, speed up in the middle, and slow down again at the end. Super handy for smooth movements where something goes from one side of the screen to the other, or from small to large in a natural fluid way. If you see ease in out, quad ease, or cubic ease, they're basically giving you that smooth in, smooth out motion. The difference is how sharp or gentle the middle speed becomes. Bounce and overshoot. Bounce will create a quick recoil before settling in place, like a ball hitting the floor, bouncing up, then stopping. Overshoot makes the motion go a bit too far, then come back, as if it's stretching and snapping back. These are great for fun, playful animations, but can look weird if you overuse them. Applying ease animations to a moving object. Let's do a quick example with a rocket graphic moving across the screen. Put your rocket clip in the timeline and resize it, maybe making it smaller so it's easy to see. Put one keyframe at the start where you want the rocket to begin. 
move the playhead a few seconds forward and reposition the rocket on the other side of the screen. This automatically creates a second keyframe. Open Graph Editor by right-clicking, or sometimes just click on the clip, then select Show Keyframe Animation. Click on X or Position to see the graph. Look for the Ease In Ease Out presets. For example, choose Ease In. This means the rocket will start slowly and pick up speed toward the end. You'll see a line on the graph and little handles that you can drag. By moving these handles, you can make the start or end of the animation move faster or slower. Play around with it. If you bend the line upward in the middle, the car speeds up more. If you flatten it near the end, the car slows down. Watch the clip. You'll notice the rocket gliding gracefully from one side to the other. This looks more professional than just a constant speed movement. Color shift with keyframes. Keyframes aren't just for moving objects around. They can also be used to shift color or brightness over time. Let's make a cool color shift effect to spice up your footage. Drag any footage to your timeline. Something colorful like a sunset works great to show off changes in color. Look for Adjustment or Color tab. Scroll down to see if there's a diamond icon next to properties like brightness, contrast, temperature, or tint. Set the first keyframe at the start of the clip without changing any settings, or maybe just a slight tweak if you'd like. Move to the end of the clip, and now drastically change the color by adjusting temperature, making it warm or cool, brightness, or tint. This automatically creates another keyframe. You'll see the clip slowly shift from one color scheme to another. This is perfect for a dreamy effect, a day-to-night transition, or a dramatic reveal. Adding text color changes. Want your text to go from white to a bright neon color over time? Keyframes make it happen. Click the text tool and type something short, like subscribe. Choose a font you like, add a stroke or shadow if you want it to pop. Open color keyframing. You should see a diamond icon near the color picker. Put one keyframe at the start. Move the playhead to the end of that text layer and pick a totally different color. CapCut automatically creates the second keyframe. Hit play and enjoy the smooth color transition. Bouncing ball animation. Now for something a bit more advanced but super fun, a bouncing animation effect. Place an image or short video of a ball onto the timeline. You can use anything circular if you don't have a ball image. Go to the one second mark on your timeline. Here is where to check your time. Click the transform keyframe icon and drag the ball toward the bottom of your preview window. This is where you want it to land. Move the playhead back to the beginning of the clip and drag the ball upward until it's no longer visible. This creates the illusion the ball starts up high and falls down. If you play now, the ball moves straight down at a steady pace. Not very bouncy, right? Open the graph editor. Look for the Y, vertical position graph. Create a smooth fall. Select the first keyframe. Activate the Bezier handles. Drag the handle so the curve starts gently and speeds up near the bottom. This mimics gravity, making it fall faster as it goes. Now let's create the bounce. After the ball reaches the bottom keyframe, move about 20 frames forward and add another keyframe by dragging the ball slightly up. Keep adding keyframes every 20 frames, each time raising the ball a bit less to show the ball is losing energy. Adjusting each bounce. For the second keyframe, the first bounce, hide the left handle in the graph so the motion doesn't look weird. Gently curve the right handle to control the way the ball moves into the next bounce. Repeat for each bounce, making every bounce smaller than the last. The ball should drop quickly and bounce multiple times, each bounce getting tinier until the ball settles. This effect is a fantastic way to understand how adjusting speed and ease can create realistic movements. More keyframe ideas and prompts. Opacity fade in out. Add a title or image, start with 0% opacity at the first keyframe, then 100% opacity a few frames later. It'll fade in smoothly. Rotation animation. Keyframe your clip's rotation from 0 degrees at the start to 360 degrees at the end for a fun spinning effect. Layered animations. Try stacking multiple keyframe effects. For instance, zoom in while also changing color, or rotate while also sliding the position. Whenever you experiment, remember that the distance between keyframes controls how fast something moves or changes, and the graph adjustments decide how it changes, like starting slow, finishing fast, bouncing, or smoothly gliding. You've learned slow zooms, dramatic zooms, color shifts, text color fades, and even that bouncy ball trick. And that's it, the secret sauce of keyframes. With just a few well-placed diamonds on your timeline, 
You can guide the viewer's eye, set the mood, and make your videos look like they were edited on a Hollywood budget. If this walkthrough leveled up your editing game, smash that like button and subscribe so you never miss a new tip. Got questions or an epic keyframe idea? Drop it in the comments. I read every single one. For more editing hacks, check out the next video popping up on screen now.